Alright guys, so as I said before I was planning on selling the ZV E10 and uh, along with it I'm also selling the one of my uh, oldest, one of my first mirrorless cameras which is the E XE3 Fujifilm XE3 which is right here as you can see uh, I believe I bought this in 2017 2018 around that time and here's the ZV E10 which is very popular with uh, with the uh, crowds I would say uh, this is a really good hybrid camera it has a flip out screen uh, the screen here I did have to put a, a, a protector uh, not because I was scared of breaking the device, but basically I wear Polaroid glasses, as you can see. And if you don't put in this uh, protector, you won't be able to see the screen because uh, I guess Polaroid uh, glasses don't work with uh, the screen. Uh, but simple, I think it's like $14 on Amazon. Don't quote me on that. Maybe I'll link the, uh, the product in the bottom. But... Yeah, uh, I don't make any money, no affiliate links. These have already been uh, coded by Robert's camera. So I will not be selling them to you. So uh, I'm not making any money out of this video anyway. So this is just infor uh, informal educational video. So um, yeah, this the, the advantages of the ZV-E10 is that the E-mount especially at the 1180 uh, 11 millimeter 1.8 that is a miracle lens for the sony's uh, apc apsc systems because of the wide nature of the beast um, it basically gives you uh, a feel uh well it gives you 60 mill millimeters and it performs well in low light situation perfect for vlogging uh, Everyone knows the specs on this, so I'm not going to run through the specs, but uh, one of the issues that I did face uh, and recently uh, saw was the, the color shifts during ISO changes. Now, I don't vlog manual, it's a pain in the butt to vlog in manual, so I put it in aperture mode, highest uh, aperture 22 I think or 16 on the 11 millimeter, and let the camera do its thing, but well, when you go from uh, bright to the shadow, the ISO needs to come up because you're at uh, aperture 22 or 16, and the color shifts. So that is a major issue. Uh, this is, first of all, a great beginner video camera. You do get S log 2 uh, and S log 3, but I would not suggest shooting in S log 3. What I usually do is shoot an uh, S log two and ITU matrix seven oh nine, um, and then adjust uh, the colors from there a tiny bit because this is still eight bits and you don't want to push the colors. Um, uh, you don't want to push the colors at all. Uh, the fifty, I think it's uh, at at four K. You get hundred uh, megabits per second, megabytes per second, whichever it is. Uh, correct me. Feel free to correct me. Uh, but whichever it is, 100 megabits per second seems to be in a range where I can actually switch the colors and not get uh, banding. I did repurchase the G95 and immediately I, uh, I remembered that I already had taken a video of it. You, you might see it on the channel and I'll probably link that too. But the, there was severe banding issues with that. And uh, the problem is that I think it's at 28 uh, megabits per second at 1080p. I would not shoot that at 4K because there's a huge crop, even with the 9mm Panasonic. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not great for vlogging, but uh, I, s I saw uh, banding in the sky. There was blue skies and banding. Uh, I don't get this. This is also an 8-bit uh, camera, but if you push the colors enough, you will see banding. So don't get me wrong. You will see banding, but it is much better than the G95. Um, I purchased it from BNH and returned it immediately after remembering I took a video with that camera and uh, BNH has been great uh, 
no questions asked other than uh, how would you like your refund so this I did sell to Robert's camera another major issue with this is that uh, it does have only one customizable uh, profile which doesn't switch when you switch the modes between video photo and SNQ uh, that basically mean, means uh, you're limited to one profile so if you set one profile and if you use it uh, use that profile all day long then you'll be good uh, the way I use it is I use that one profile for daylight and I use manual mode for nighttime so manual mode especially with this I don't uh, need the ISO to change because I know it'll always be at 6400 or 3200 nothing nothing lower than that because you're in low light environments I still have to run uh, need video to get a better image but uh, yeah it is what it is uh, the camera's telling me I'm clipping great let's let's pause for a second there you are there it is okay so as I was saying, uh, this is a great vlogging camera, unless you need uh, more than one uh, profile to use. For vlogging, you really don't need it. And it does come with uh, this uh, wind muff that you just put in into this socket right here, hot shoe. But uh, then you lose out the digital functionality that you have with the hot shoe. I do have the Sony microphones which uh, draw power uh, and directly communicate with the camera using that uh, connector, but it adds weight and causes more complexity to the system. So the simple you like, simple you keep it, the better it is. That's why I like uh, just put on the wind muff on top and let the camera do its thing. Uh, I found out with the ZV-1 Mark II and the ZV-1, ZV-E1, the uh, the audio uh, you can just directionally change the audio to whichever you want back or forth uh, front or back or all around and it works fine so I just put it in front and it works well uh, other than that build quality you know people complain about the build quality they say it's plasticky but uh, yeah wait weight is a concern uh, I like the things to be as uh, weightless as possible now don't get me wrong this feels much better in hand but i i will always gravitate to a lighter camera um, this doesn't think, seem like it's going to fall off anytime soon maybe 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 the glue would start to come off after several years of uh, several years i don't know five six seven years i don't know how long you're going to use it but the way technology changes it seems like uh, we're getting things every two years from now on um, if I do sell this and if I do go move on to an APS-C body, Sony APS body, even though I have the XS10, XS20, the XH2S, I would probably get the A6700 because of the 10-bit video. And also, on, I own the 11mm 1.8. Uh, even though I own the ZV-E1, the lens size is quite compact. I have to use uh, a Zhiyun M3S just to uh, have the capability of taking it out on a gimbal uh, using the 14mm 1.8, which I prefer. So, if I were to get another Sony body, I would probably get the 6700 uh, because of the lightweight and also the compactness of that 11mm 1.8. Uh, anything I missed? Uh, battery life the battery life on this is pretty good uh, I usually get like hour hour and a half of video before the battery really goes below but I think you can go not much beyond one uh, one hour 20 minutes so 90 minutes I would say would be the cutoff time uh, for that 90 minutes 60 30 yeah 90 minutes I think would be the max for this uh, gyro data yeah gyro data is also important even though i use a gimbal and uh, because of the of the uh, rolling shutter on this thing uh, 
once you put it to catalyst, catalyst browse, uh, it does take away some of the rolling shutter and it also uh, smoothens out the image. Uh, the problem with that is that catalyst browse only works uh, with CPU cores. So you need a lot of CPU cores in your system for, for you to get a, a good turnaround. And also, it only exports 8-bit video. So if you want 10-bit, then, uh, then you have to purchase uh, Premiere you know, uh, uh, Catalyst Browse. What's the other one? I don't even know. But you have to buy their uh, monthly service just to uh, uh, process the gyro data in 10-bit, which is another hassle. Uh, yeah, so 1180 meter, uh, 11 uh, millimeter 1.8 uh, is one of the reasons I bought this, and also uh, the video. Uh, learned a great deal about Sony systems using this, and it only gets better. Um, I think the problem, the color shifting problem, will be resolved if you use 10-bit uh, video codec. I think uh, it is. Uh, I think that is a major issue with this. If they do come out, they need to come out with the 10-bit, and I hope the ZV. One Mark II gets firmware update where they uh, give you 10 bit. All right, moving on. Let's go and see you with this one. So, this is the Fuji film, right? This, I think, I, if I remember correctly, I bought in uh, 2014. Uh, no, not 2014. What am I saying? No, 2017. Uh, 2017, 2018, where I took this to Paris uh, to film the Bastille Day. Uh, which is a video right before this one, I guess, uh, and using the 18, mil 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, I was able to get great images and video. I only used uh, this for one video, which was the the fireworks. I was a novice back then, where I did not use uh, a manual focus, well, just in a manual mode. I used aperture again and let the camera do its thing, but it did. Uh, I could have gotten better images and better exposure manually. But it was what it was, and I did get great images. It wasn't stabilized. I didn't have a uh, gimbal with me in hand, uh, but uh, it it's very light. It, you know, now with the eight millimeter, this would be a great street carry. It has top dials, which you literally can switch around exposure one. I always leave the exposure to uh, 0.75. Uh, I like to um, shoot into the highlights a little bit. Also, I'll leave everything in, uh, basically I leave this camera in aperture mode with high uh, shutter rate. Uh, specs, you can get it online, but uh, this is a great camera. Uh, but I think uh, it is being superseded by the uh, the X-S10 and also a better all-around camera, the X-S20. Uh, that's why I'm giving this away. I know uh, this thing uh, is uh, popular since you are not able to find an X-E4 or the very popular X100V. Uh, the X100V I would not buy because I cannot change the lens. I need a wide enough lens. I need as wide as possible, especially sh shooting in the city. Uh, yeah, I've been in many pla many times caught red-handed where I could not back up and uh, I could not take shots in tiny areas, especially uh, sh food. Uh, I can With the eight millimeter, I can literally get this close and take the shot if I wanted to. Uh, great camera. Uh, it, it is built for photos, so it is not uh, not a video centric camera. Uh, it has a 30 minute limit, uh, so unless you're shooting uh, long videos, it shouldn't be a problem. But like fireworks in Paris in Bastille Day, they sh uh, they go on for at least an hour with music. So yeah, it does have an. Uh, a mic input on uh, on the left hand side so you just stick a mic and boom you have yourself a video camera not stabilized but you can use the kit lens to stabilize it uh, let's see if I can turn this thing on Should have... nope no battery I guess uh, yeah so this Fujifilm uh, the autofocus I usually just put in single and fire a uh, single point fire because I'm not tracking the subject so I, I do not know how good it is uh, with tracking subjects you probably can ask someone else or see other videos on this but yeah another great device which I have to let go but it is what it is uh, this also is an 8-bit no log so another problem is no log you you want you get a baked in image so if you see the last video of the fireworks I could not switch it much 
I could not change uh, anything color wise or uh, gamma wise uh, yeah if I did it would break the whole thing uh, so HDR is a major issue with this camera but it's from uh, 2017 2018 so it is what it is so we move from that to this in f uh, three to four years time uh, and now we have the 6700 so great great news all around all right guys hopefully this was helpful but um, I do have to say that Robert's camera great place to sell your gear uh, fair prices it's not what you get when you sell yourself but you know it's, it's another hassle you don't have to worry about I understand you want to go through the process of selling but then you know you never know what might happen especially with the buyer and uh, yeah it's no one's fault this uh, it's just how the system works I, I feel more com comfortable selling it to a camera store and have them uh, basically sell it themselves for a profit obviously so you're not going to get the full price of it but I do like how Robert's camera worked with me when I did sell the R6 and hopefully when I send these over uh, it'll be as smooth as that one as well alright guys so it's a Friday it's uh, what time is it it's uh, 5 30 uh, and uh, yeah uh, hopefully everyone has a great weekend good night